Welcome, seekers of the extraordinary, to Mystery Connections. Here, we delve into the inexplicable, the enigmatic, and the unexplained, journeying together into the depths of the world's greatest mysteries. As we navigate through the labyrinth of the unknown, we invite you to keep an open mind, for reality, as we know it, may be stranger than fiction. Prepare to venture into the realm of the unexpected, as we bring to you a tale that remains etched in the annals of the extraordinary. A tale that began on an ordinary day in the bustling cities of India, yet evolved to capture the attention of the world. A tale that defies logic, challenges reason, and invites disbelief. So, sit back and let us transport you to the 21st of September, 1995. A day that started like any other, but soon turned into a spectacle of mystic proportions. Today, we unravel the enigma of the milk-drinking Ganesha. Stay tuned and let the mystery unfold. Imagine waking up to a day that seemed like any other, only to witness a phenomenon that defied logic and science. It was on the 21st of September, 1995, an ordinary day that took an extraordinary turn as dawn broke across the vibrant cities of India an unusual occurrence began to unfold. The stone statues of Lord Ganesha, the elephant-headed Hindu deity, were reported to be drinking milk offerings, a spectacle, you'd agree, that defies the very laws of physics. At first, there was disbelief. Statues don't drink milk, right? But as the early morning sun began to shine, the murmurs turned into loud exclamations. From the bustling streets of Delhi, to the serene temples in the southern city of Chennai, people were amazed and excited. Soon, the news began to spread like wildfire. The local tea stalls, the crowded markets, the tranquil temples, the chatter was everywhere. The idol of Lord Ganesha, the remover of obstacles, was drinking milk. The disbelief soon gave way to a collective sense of wonder. People flocked to the nearest temples, each carrying a spoonful of milk, a blend of curiosity and reverence in their eyes. Word of this mystical event spread beyond the confines of homes and local neighborhoods. The news channels began reporting about the phenomenon, their reporters dispatched to temples trying to capture this divine mystery unfolding in real time. The early morning surprise turned into a mid-morning sensation. As the morning turned into noon, the phenomenon had not only captured the imagination of India, but had started to intrigue the world. Reports were coming in from the United Kingdom, Canada, UAE and Nepal. Even the Hindu Temple Society of North America bore witness to this spectacle. The world watched in amazement, the unfolding of a day that had started just like any other. By noon, the news was not just in India, but had traveled across the globe, leaving everyone stunned and curious. A normal morning had turned mysterious, and this was just the beginning. The day of the milk-drinking Ganesha had only just begun. As the sun moved westward, the hysteria spread eastward, reaching far-off lands. It wasn't just within the borders of India that the news of the milk-drinking deity spread like wildfire. Reports began to surface from distant countries, places where the Indian diaspora had carried their faith and their gods. The phenomenon reached the United Kingdom, where devotees flocked to their local temples, milk in hand, hoping to witness the miracle. Canada, too, was not left out of this divine spectacle, as temples were filled with believers eager to offer their milk to Ganesha. The news spread across the Arabian Sea to the UAE, where the Indian community curiously tested the phenomenon. The mountainous kingdom of Nepal, India's neighbor, also reported instances of the deity's unusual thirst. Perhaps the most surprising was the report from the United States, thousands of miles away from India. At the Hindu Temple Society of North America, specifically the Ganesh Temple, the same spectacle was reported. The deity, it seemed, was not bound by geography. With every passing hour, the news brought more and more people to the temples. What was once a place of serene worship became a hub of frenzied activity. Lines snaked around corners, winding into the streets as devotees waited their turn to feed the deity. The air was thick with a mix of confusion, awe, and excitement. The chaos was not limited to the temples. Grocery stores reported a sudden surge in milk sales, 
with shelves being emptied as fast as they could be stocked. Traffic jams clogged the roads leading to temples, the honking of horns adding to the cacophony of the day. But as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. And this frenzy was no exception. As abruptly as it had started, the phenomenon ceased. The deity stopped drinking milk. The lines at the temples thinned, the traffic jams cleared, and the life, as it always does, went back to normal. The frenzy, however, was short-lived. As abruptly as it had started, the phenomenon ceased, leaving behind a trail of bewilderment. While miracles are often left unexplained, this one caught the attention of the scientific community. Enter Ross McDowell from India's Ministry of Science and Technology. Intrigued by the phenomenon, he travelled to a temple in New Delhi, carrying with him a spoonful of milk tinged with a touch of food colouring. Now, let's talk about what he was trying to prove. You see, McDowell was testing a hypothesis about capillary action. But what is capillary action, you might ask? Well, it's a process that allows liquid to flow in narrow spaces, defying gravity. It's the same principle that allows trees to draw water from their roots up into their leaves. So, McDowell offered the colored milk to the statue of Ganesha. As the level of liquid in the spoon dropped, he observed the colored milk coating the statue beneath where the spoon was placed. The milk wasn't disappearing into thin air, nor was the statue drinking it. Instead, the milk was being drawn out of the spoon and onto the statue due to the surface tension of the milk. This is capillary action in action, folks. With this experiment, McDowell proposed that the so-called miracle was a natural phenomenon. The surface tension of the milk was pulling the liquid up and out of the spoon before gravity caused it to run down the front of the statue. However, this scientific explanation wasn't the end of the story. The phenomenon seemed to cease before the end of the day, with many statues refusing to take more milk even before noon. A small number of temples outside of India reported the effect continuing for several more days, but no further reports were made after the beginning of October. Was this a case of capillary action reaching its limits? Or was there something more to it? McDowell's experiment provided a plausible explanation, yet it didn't account for every aspect of this intriguing event. This scientific explanation, however, did not convince everyone. For many, it remained a divine miracle. And so, the debate between faith and science continues. In the aftermath of the event, two groups emerged prominently, the skeptics and the believers. Let's delve into the perspectives of each. On one side, skeptics chalked up the phenomenon to mass hysteria, a collective delusion spread by word of mouth. They argued that the human mind, shaped by cultural influences and religious beliefs, is prone to see what it wants to see. The skeptics pointed to the scientific explanation of capillary action, the surface tension of the milk pulling the liquid up and out of the spoon, before gravity caused it to run down the statue. They also highlighted the role of the media in amplifying the event. As news of the miracle spread, more and more people began to see it, reinforcing the belief. This theory suggests that the human mind, primed by the power of suggestion, was tricked into perceiving the statues to be drinking milk. On the other side of the spectrum, the believers held steadfast to their faith. They saw the sudden cessation of the phenomenon as further proof of its divine origin. For them, the fact that many statues refused to take more milk even before noon and that the phenomenon seemed to cease before the end of the day was evidence of the miraculous nature of the event. The believers also pointed to the few temples outside of India where the effect reportedly continued for several more days. These instances, they argued, couldn't be easily explained by capillary action or mass hysteria. The phenomenon of Ganesha drinking milk, regardless of the differing viewpoints, stirred the hearts and minds of millions. It brought together communities, sparked conversations, and provoked thought. And isn't that, after all, the power of a true mystery? 
While the debate between skeptics and believers continues, the event remains etched in the memory of millions. More than two decades later, the event of Ganesha drinking milk remains one of India's greatest unsolved mysteries. The memory of that unusual day in September 1995 is still fresh in many minds. The tales of Ganesha, the remover of obstacles, accepting milk from his devotees, have been passed down through generations, becoming an integral part of the Indian storytelling tradition. The incident, while baffling to many, has become a cultural touchstone, a story told and retold, each time with a sense of awe and wonder. This event has also left an indelible mark on Hinduism, a religion known for its rich mythology and countless miracles. The milk-drinking Ganesha became a symbol of divine intervention, reinforcing the faith of many believers. It's a story that's often narrated during religious gatherings, adding another layer to the tapestry of Hindu mythology. The mystery surrounding the event continues to intrigue scientists and skeptics alike. Despite the proposed explanation of capillary action, many believe that the phenomenon was too widespread and synchronized to be merely a scientific anomaly. The fact that the event stopped abruptly, with many statues refusing to take more milk before the day's end, further fuels the sense of mystery. Theories continue to abound, with speculations ranging from mass suggestion to a well-orchestrated hoax. Yet, no definitive explanation has been reached, making the event a favorite topic for discussion among mystery enthusiasts and cultural explorers. The Ganesha Milk Miracle, as it's often called, has not only become a part of India's cultural memory, but also a testament to the country's unending fascination with the unknown. It stands as an example of how, in India, the boundaries between the divine and the mundane often blur, creating a tapestry of experiences that's as rich and diverse as its people. Whether it was a divine miracle, a simple scientific phenomenon, or an example of mass hysteria, the event of Ganesha drinking milk remains an unforgettable chapter in India's rich and diverse history.